What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to our fifth part in our series on real business cycle theory. Uh, in this video, we're going to solve the model in the most general case. Let's go. So as stated before, we cannot solve the baseline real business cycle model analytically. Instead, to analyze the model, we must take the first order Taylor approximation and the logs around the key variables, that being the C's and L's, non-stochastic balanced growth paths. This way, we can still analyze the implications of this model through the approximation. The log-linear approximation of these variables must take the following form, right? Where k t tilde, a t tilde, and g t tilde are defined as log-linear variables. To solve the model, we must determine the values of our a's, right? This is referred to as the method of undetermined coefficients. What this means is basically to solve for the a's in each of these equations, we need a structural model to know where these variables go and fit in. Using the baseline model we already have, we can solve for such values. We will be analyzing two different decisions the consumers face in this video. The labor leisure trade-off in each period called the intra-temporal decision. And the second one being the distribution of lifetime consumption, right, which is the intertemporal decision. Let's talk about the intra-temporal conditions. To solve for these values, recall the household's first order conditions for the trade-off between current consumption and labor supply. This being C of T all over one minus L, right, which is the labor supply per household, right, is equal to WT over B, right? Recall that our wages are defined as one minus alpha times KT over AL raised to the power of alpha times AT, right? Take the logs of the above equation and we get the following. We want the first order Taylor approximation around the balanced growth path. Approximating each of these variables on the right hand side of this equation is pretty straightforward since the difference between the level values here and the BGP values is just one minus alpha times AT tilde plus alpha K tilde minus alpha L tilde. For the difference on the, for the left hand side, note that population is not shocked by any economic factors. Thus the difference between the log consumption per worker and the total log consumption from their balanced growth path is equivalent, right? Thus, C T tilde, right? Little C T is equal is equal to C T tilde, right? I mean, basically, literal C T, right, which is the consumption per worker, is equal to the log linearized total consumption per worker, and it follows by the same logic that the labor supply per worker, right, is equivalent to um, L T, right, which is the labor stock, right? That's those are the the, the linearized versions, log linearized versions. Note that the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to uh, labor supply per household at time t is evaluated, which is evaluated at LT star, right, which is our optimum value, is LT star over 1 minus LT, right, which that is labor supply per household all over um, the optimal uh, leisure, right? And the derivative of the log uh, consumption per household or consumption per worker, right, is one. Thus, the log linearized ab above condition around the balanced growth path yields the following, right, where we have capital CT plus LT star over one minus LT times capital LT, which is labor stock, right, the log linearized labor stock is equal to one minus alpha times AT tilde plus alpha K tilde minus alpha L tilde. Further solving this model, recall that the asymptotically equivalent values of CT and LT are from equations one and two, right, on the first slide. Um, this result could be further simplified to what we have below. This equation must hold for all values of K tilde, A tilde, and G tilde. Otherwise, some combination of these variables could increase utility by changing consumption and labor supply. Right, and that would not be a unique solution. Um, writing these conditions as a set of linear equations, our A's must satisfy the following. So that's how we go and we solve for this. Um, if we want to get you know specific values of our A's, um, you just go and you know put this in a matrix and apply Kramer's rule if you want to go and get each one of these values. But uh, I'm not going to go through that right here. Solving for our intertemporal conditions, however, are a little bit more tricky since we will be linearizing our Euler equation, right, which is one over CT is equal to this discount factor times the expectation from time T of one plus 
the rate of return on the market at period t plus one all over consumption at t plus one. Uh, since approximation of uh, our CT must hold for all periods, right? We have the same sort of equation that we're going to have for uh, the next one, right? Which is basically equivalent to equation one, but we're just adding a T plus one to all of our subscripts. Solving this becomes more complicated um, than what we saw previously because we have an endogenous variable, right? That endogenous variable is uh, KT plus one. We can log linearize uh, the principal equation and then sub in equations one and two in it, but that would further complicate the identification of the parameters. In this case, we would have to analyze the stock of each of these variables uh, numerically. So um, there's no real solution to that intertemporal condition, right? We're, in order to come to a real conclusion, we're just gonna have to like evaluate nu it numerically, which means that you know you just pick a value plug it in and just study the implications of what comes out from the model. We could, however, go and analyze, you know, the other parts of this model, right? We log linearize, we can log linearize our production function and we can describe output, investment, wages, and the rate of return on the market. So that's a little bit more simple, right? It's straightforward. So as you can see, right, we go and we have our production function, which is from uh, the primary equation or the primary problem from our baseline model. Uh, we log linearize it, right? Remember, as in, I probably should have said in the beginning, but the tildes over here, right? That just means it's logged, right? It's log linearized, right? And uh, you have that over there. We know our log linearized variables or the approximations of those variables for LT, right? We could just go and plug right in here. And we come to a solution here at the bottom, whereby which we can take this and plug it in to um, each of our equations in our structural model. So that's how you solve the model in the general sense. And that's the entire series on real business cycle theory. Take care.